Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 58. This episode is Charlotte Louise. She is an actress. She is a model. She is a creature performer. She is also hilarious. And this talk was so much fun. But a little backstory. You'll notice in the beginning, we're very excited. <laughs> and that is because we spent a, uh, a very large amount of time trying to figure out how Skype works. And uh, we did it. We did it. And it was a major accomplishment. And uh, we just were cracking up the whole time. This was such a fun chat uh, with a really fun person. We talk about uh, how she got into modeling. We talk about how she almost went into law, uh, working on episode eight, working on Solo. She was Margot and uh, a Twi'lek, if you will, uh, on Solo. She was at the game where Han won the Falcon. Fair and square, she can say, because uh, they actually taught the performers sabak. How cool is that? It's that detailed. She was also uh, the orange horned alien on Canto Bite. She talks about that set and what it was like to wear uh, that animatronic, getting a life cast done, all kinds of cool stuff. But she also gives us our new our new mantra here. And I'm not going to explain it now, but I will say... Uh, don't spill the gravy, all right? And that's going to be very profound uh, by the end of this. And uh, this is just super fun. She's awesome. And you guys are really going to enjoy this. So without further ado, here is the Interesting Podcast, episode number 58 with Charlotte Louise. Theme song time. <laughs> Hello. Please tell me you can hear me. I can. Oh my god. Oh my uh, god. We did it. I haven't got the headphones plugged in at the moment. I'm not sure what the sound quality is like. Do I dare to plug them in? It's it sounds good, but you could try it. We can always go back. <laughs> we have nothing to lose now, Charlotte. <laughs> I can't believe it. I actually thought it was one of those practical jokes like, no, I can't hear you and you can secretly just hear me here swearing. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's that's just the show. It's been fun. Have a good one. You couldn't hear me. Okay, I'm going to try to plug these in quickly. One second. Okay, here we go. Can you still hear me? Try it. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, <gasps> we've done it. Oh, God, it's just none of my technology is updated. I'm blaming it and I'm cussing it out, but it's actually my fault. <laughs> hey, it oh, works. God, okay. All's well that ends well. All yeah, right. exactly. I mean, it's like quarter past nine. What time did we start doing that? <laughs> we, we figured, oh. thank God we started early, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly exactly we could have gone well into midnight like we could have gone into tomorrow if not e- easily oh okay that was good okay oh, huge load off you know Whoo, breaths oh, deep oh, breaths <laughs> so uh, apart from the last 45 minutes how you doing yeah i'm good now i think i literally just made myself a cup of tea while while i was doing that i was like i'll leave it to update and just see see if it works because my phone you know what the iphone 7 is like you only have that one pool and it needs to be charged and then at the same time, you use it for half an hour and the battery's dead and I can't plug the headphones in at the same time. So I was just like, it's like, I love you, Apple. I love you so much. But sometimes you just make my life really, really awkward. Of course, of course. But it's worth it. We figured it out. It's good. At least uh, it literally, I used it um, two days ago and it was fine. See, that's the that's One, one the of fact. us is yeah. It's normally me, but this time it might actually be you. Yeah, that fact when you're like, it just worked. I was like, oh God, maybe it is me. Don't say that. Don't say that. Wait till we figure it, it out. Each time, each time I was just like, please tell me you can hear me now. And you went, oh, and I thought you could hear me. You're like, no. <laughs> just like, just a little bit of false hope to be like, maybe, but no. No, it just really sounded like, you're like, oh, no. Yeah, no, definitely not. But now, now we can. All right. Okay. All's well that ends well. Okay. We we've done it. Got off to a good start, so. That's right. That's right. You. Uh, how were your auditions today? Yeah, they were fine, thank you. It's just uh, one of those things where they all seem to end up at different ends of London, at different well, around the same time of day, and you just end up running around. And they're like, "Oh, we're going to stop for our lunch break." I was like, "Okay, I haven't had my breakfast yet, and it's uh, half past one, but that's fine. <laughs> it's fine. You guys take your time." Of course, yeah, of course. Exactly. That's how it goes. 
That's that. Yeah, that's, how are you? I'm good. Uh, we okay. made it through. Like I just realized I know nothing about Skype, and I don't <laughs> want to know anything about Skype. <laughs> I feel like we just had this real moment, Charlotte, trying to figure this out. <laughs> through like emojis and chat. All of it. It's so strange though being on the other end of that conversation because obviously I can hear you, and uh, every time I go into the preferences, if I click off to click onto a conversation, the preferences disappear. Oh no! And it takes like I'm not good with Skype, obviously. Same. That's why it took me so long to go back through the process and. Uh, but yeah, we did it. Triumph. <laughs> you think I'd be better having recorded almost 50 episodes? Uh, yeah, no, we no. can't really account for people that don't update their technology. <laughs> so. Well, now I know. At least I'm not using honest. Microsoft. It's fine. Yeah, like, exactly. Ex- I'm sorry, Microsoft. <laughs> exactly. Now I can. T- now if it isn't working for future guests, I'll be like, "Have you updated your system?" So yeah, I, I think I, I've learned something. Update as well, but I'm not. I'm not going down that road today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always so nervous when it comes to like Apple updates. They're like, "Do you want to do the entire system?" I was like, mm, "No, I don't." Or you like sit come up and you know you've got a busy week ahead of you. Your iPhone is updating, and then you're like, "Nope, not this week. It doesn't. It's fine. <laughs> At the moment it's working, so it's fine." <laughs> it's exactly right. I think I'm still like a an update behind. On my iMac, they're like, do you want to do the mountain one? I was like, mm, I kind of like the leopard oh, no, one. No, I'm on something else. I'm on. I don't even know which one I'm on. I think I'm on like four behind or something. I, I mean, don't. It still either. works, you know. That's that's what matters. Most of it works. Yeah. When I said you're going to be snarky, I had like a pinwheel for like two, three minutes. So <laughs> that's but the then, price you pay. It's like they try and make it look colorful and nice, and you're like, no, I know what that is. I know what it is. That's right. You're trying to you're trying to cover it up with pretty lights, but I know you're inadequate. Yeah, I'm, I'm with <laughs> exactly, you. Exactly. I'm with you there. So you're you're in London. You're brave London. to drive in London. Do you drive in London? I do drive in London. Yes, yeah, I'm braver than I. It's actually it's not that bad though. I think once you do it, I cycle in London as well. So I think you probably have to be a bit braver, Even braver. to cycle in London. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, they've um they made a lot of improvements with the cycle. I think it's called Cycle Highway or Super Highway or something. So mm-hmm. you can actually cycle all the way along the Thames in a designated bicycle lane. So it's a lot safer, but. You still hear the stories about people getting knocked off and stuff. But of course, of course. I think it's it's because I think it's everything's so connected in the city. It's really easy to cycle from one place to another. So I'm I literally have four, three, four castings and then two auditions. So I'll cycle to them. I mean, I turn up a sweaty mess, but it's like <laughs> I don't have time to go to the gym today, so that's my other option. There you go. There you go. That counts. I had a guest on one time who described London's streets like on a map, looking like a cracked windshield, and I was like, yeah, yeah that's perfect. Exactly yeah, no, that's exactly that's exactly it. And then you have all the back streets, and uh, Google Maps will take you down the little cobblestone lanes. And I don't know if you've ever been down one of those on a bicycle, especially on one a bicycle. that doesn't have even. Like, so I have like a fixie, so it has no other gears, so everything that's uphill or and it has no sort of shock absorbance on it or anything. So it's just one of those things. You go down one of these little cobblestone roads, and you're just all over the place. You're bumping up and down. People are looking at you. <laughs> And then we've had just had a thing. Uh, we've had loads and loads of green flies recently. So they literally like you get. I get to an audition. I've got them like in my teeth, uh, like, in the corners <laughs> of my eyes. <laughs> People turn up and look at me. I was like sweaty, covered in green flies. Like, hi, I'm here for this modelling job. <laughs> like, oh, you, I'm here to do something for clear or something. <laughs> Not after right. that. I was like, I'm just going to wash the green flies off and hope the makeup doesn't come off with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the. This is the real actor's story that they don't tell you about. I, just, I feel like every everyone has that sort of thing, though. I feel like uh, you always see the girls, especially with like the modelling jobs, they always go into the bathroom before they go through to their casting audition because when we turn up, we don't look anything like the way we look when we actually go for the casting. <laughs> there's, always nice, there's always nice lighting, and there's always someone that knows where to point them and stuff. So it's, I don't think we can take full credit for that. But Fair, fair. These Sorry. people, if you see the way some of us turn up, and they have to sort it out. But that's one of the perks of the job. It's like I don't have to do my hair or my makeup today, and everyone's going to like, everyone's going to make me look the best that I can look today. That's right. And they're like, it requires almost zero effort for me. That's that's <laughs> right. That's right. I I worked on uh, Ballers uh, a few years back, and one of the best perks, even for like background, was free haircuts. It's like, oh, oh really? And I'm like, this is oh, the that's, best. That's the opposite for me, though. They're like, so uh, we'd like to trim your hair for this role. I'm like, nope. I was like, you want to be shooting my whole show reel, my headshots, like my modeling portfolio. I had one today, actually, it was, uh, I won't say the company name, obviously, but it was um, just a hair modeling job. It's online. And they're just like, so um, how how would you like to have your hair done? And I said, no, it says styling only. It's like, so we were thinking we would cut it above your ear and have a block oh, fringe, and then no. we would dye it. I, uh, like traffic cone orange <laughs> and I was like yeah and this job I mean it's not a badly paid job as far as normal jobs go but for a hair modeling job it was around 500 pounds nice 
That's not nice. <laughs> <laughs> not for the cost of all of your hair. No, it's not. But the other thing is, obviously, something like that happens and then you can't do. So a lot of my work is like commercials. I get a lot of uh, like hair supplements and stuff like that. So yeah. I get hired. Obviously, people know that like, my hair has no color on it. It's like long and it's natural. So that's the way I get hired. If I have my hair cut that way, then that's potentially me not working until that grows out, I guess. Right. So for like 500 pounds it's like how long can i make this 500 pounds last yeah no for the for the cost <laughs> absolutely not <laughs> exactly, exactly obviously if it's like a campaign or something it's one of those things is like oh it's a campaign obviously it's gonna be in all the windows or i guess it's like a it's like if you get a role for a bigger film they're like oh okay we need to cut your hair You're like it's fine i know i'm going to be on that film for however long and sure like like you know you're going to be working and that's like people are going to get to know you like the way you look from that film as well so that's fine but it's just a case of it's I find it's always the people that pay you the, le- uh, the least mm-hmm. that seem to want more of you and they treat you worse than anyone else it does seem that way doesn't it it's such a it weird is. business it's such a weird business did you do did you get into acting first or modeling first because you do um, a lot of both modeling first yeah modeling first which one's harder <laughs> I feel like it's modeling uh, which one requires more patience or which one's harder? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I think the acting definitely, um, you have to put a lot more into it. And I think the modeling is really hard. A lot of people think that you just stand there in front of the camera and you look pretty. It does. It requires a lot. And if nothing else, I'd say it requires a lot of patience. Sure. It's quite difficult to stand there for six, seven, eight hours with someone taking thousands and thousands of photos. And you sort of, you run out of poses and like they tweak the costume or the hair in certain ways and you're just like you're going around in this loop like over and over again and you're just like okay I'm stuck I've, I've run out of things to do now and then you're like hang on am I bad at my job I was like I, <laughs> how, how have I run out of things to do I'm supposed to know what I'm doing here sure then you just learn yeah. different fingers up you got five poses right there just one finger up two fingers up <laughs> as you can tell I'm also a very well-known model because I have I will, a figure uh, technique. Yeah. Uh, exactly. I'm going to send my agency an email after this. But like, I know right. this guy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You can tell you, oh, yes, the finger method. Of course. Everyone, <laughs> everyone implements that. <laughs> when, when, exactly. did you, when did you start modeling then? Um, I think I, I would be nine and a half, ten years ago now. So wow. I started modeling. Yeah, as um, I was actually in London. I was studying law and criminology, so I moved up here what? with my sister. Yeah, that's that's what I was doing before this. You can't then, just uh... cross over that. You studied <laughs> law. Okay, I'm listening. Why law? Um, so originally, oh, I don't know why it takes this long to get into it, but it's uh, <laughs> I think if I backtrack, I um, so originally I grew up. I was born in Surrey, oh, cool. and then um. So my mum was from Peckham and all of my family lived in South London. And there was a, an incident where someone basically tried to attack my dad with a machete. Oh, no. And my mum's like, oh, no, I can't raise my kids here. I'm, I'm going to take them to the country. So Smart. we ended up moving to Cornwall, which is southwest of England. And uh, so we spent a few years there. And then my mum, one of her friends moved to south of Spain. And she was just telling about it, how lovely it was and... Uh, my father was a builder and my mum worked in um, sales and legal. Mm-hmm. So eventually we actually moved over to Spain and we started up our own estate agents. So we would um, we would buy the old houses in Spain and then we would do those up. My dad would do those up and he had his work team. And then my mum would deal with the sales and the legal side of it and us kids, because we picked up Spanish um, a bit quicker than my parents, we would do the translating. Mm-hmm. Anyway, after um, eventually we moved back that was like great we did that for five six years and then we decided that we'd move back to England um I moved back at the point when I don't think you have them in the US so we have GCSEs here which is something you do when you finish school that's optional and I guess you pick four subjects oh um so it's optional you can either leave school at 16 or you can do your A-levels until I guess you're 17 18 and then that's the qualification you need in order to get into university so I actually moved back the week that I would have been sitting my GCSE exams. So obviously that didn't happen. And mm-hmm. um, eventually I just ended up doing um, some adult learning courses because at that point that's what happens in England. If you have your GCSEs, you go um, and you you do like an adult learning course. Mm-hmm. And after I finished that, I was like, I don't really know what I wanted to do. And my mum was a hairdresser. So I was like, oh, I do hairdressing for a year. So I did that for a year while I was deciding what to do. I was like, it's a practical skill. Great. Sure. Then I didn't want to do that 
that and more. Then I went into business studies. So I did two years of business studies, qualified from that, and then decided that wasn't what I wanted to do anymore. And then um, I actually went back and did my A-levels. I did um, psychology, English, Spanish, law, and media. Wow. And I think after I left it... <laughs> Yeah, it was a lot. It was uh, <laughs> it was a lot of studying. I actually had an operation on my hand at the same time as well. So um, what? I, I, had to, I had to have a scribe for six months. Wow. Which is obviously twenty five percent course. Yeah, for for a scribe, she was so lovely, but I couldn't read her handwriting, so that was a bit of a nightmare <laughs> for me. It's just it's literally one of those things. Is to, like remember the lectures as as they came at you. I was like, okay, I can't really write it down. I, I was have to listen. I can't read her handwriting. I was like, it's fine. I only have to do this for another two months. Oh no. Um, and I think because with the law class, the scribe I had, I didn't really, um, I couldn't use her notes. I had to listen a lot more and I became a lot more interested in law. And I was like, okay, this is something I could potentially go into. I wanted to be, um, I wanted to work in criminal law. Mm-hmm. So um, while, I was, while I was working, um, I was actually managing a pub in, in Cornwall where my mum lives in southwest of England. And I just decided one day, I was like, I've had enough of this. Like I was managing the pub but I was getting paid just as bar staff and I decided I was like okay I'm going to look into going to uni after my gap year and I found a really nice university in London um I decided to move up and after I moved up and got into the university my sister the day before I moved up I had my student accommodation books and everything she decided that she wanted to move up with me and I was like okay that's great like I won't be lonely I'm moving back to London and yeah. I don't really know anyone at the moment. but it was good but she's um so we had this flat that was a complete nightmare. The whole there were three buildings that were wired up from two wires. Oh, no. We were on the full floor, the full floor of no fire escape. There was a fire below us at one point, and basically, oh, no. like, and we're lucky it didn't go up too much. But it was just one of those things. And then um, after that, I was just like, I was just like, I'm, I just don't want to be in London anymore. I'm just going to move back, move back down to the country with my mum, and. Uh, just go there and do something else so I just before that happened actually I had a I met a friend and she's like oh I'm with this modeling agency um she's like I think they would really like you you should go in so I'm I went in and took my book and stuff with me and they're like we'd love to take you on and then that just went on I guess I booked a few jobs and I was like okay maybe maybe I can stay in London and I did that for a little bit actually while I was doing my law degree and which I didn't finish because... <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> I wouldn't expect you to after that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, did, I loved the first year. The first year was great. It was like criminal law and everything like that. And then the second year was um, property law, European oh, law, and family law. And I was like, I'm just not going to make it. I'm not going to make it through. <laughs> they Very few people do. <laughs> and they all came in one year and I was just like, I can't do it. I cannot. I can't sit in this, uh, the room that we had for those lessons as well was a basement. Oh, no. And it, it, was, it was really late at night as well. I think the lecture started at five and it finished at nine. Oh. So you'd come out in the winter, like you'd go and it'd be daylight and you'd come out and it'd be dark and it was miles away from my apartment. So I was like, okay. Um, and then I booked, uh, I kept booking work through my modeling agency. I was like, okay, maybe this is another option because my, my mum was actually a model as well. Oh, right on. Um, and then my auntie was as well. She, uh, my auntie on my dad's side was also a model um and she did really well she did like covers of Vogue and everything and um when I think when I went to see her once she was just like oh we should like get our books out and compare them <laughs> and uh there was a couple of her things she did for Vogue and she was like we look absolutely identical I mean that's probably more of a compliment to me than it is to her but I was just like oh this, this is from Vogue I can take this out and put it in my book she's like Charlotte it says like 1970 something I was like we'll just tear the corner off it's fine <laughs> it counts they're not gonna look <laughs> yeah needless to say she didn't let me but it's um but it's fine and then um and then I'm one of my close family members had to have an operation. I actually ended up moving back down to Cornwall for two years. And while I was there, I thought I might as well do something. You know, I, I haven't been to a uni and college that much. <laughs> I should do I should do another degree. So I ended up doing a media moving image. Smart. So it's like film production, editing. So I did that for two years. Um, in between which time I was sort of traveling up to London for like modeling jobs and acting jobs and things like that. So I sort of fell into the acting through the modeling because there were a few parts. Um, I got a phone call from an AD friend of mine and he said, oh, we're looking for models for this film, but we want them to act out a part. And I was like, okay, that's fine. I can, like, if you want to send me over the stuff, I can have a look through it. 
Mm-hmm. And then I guess it just progressed from there. Uh, there were quite, there's always quite a few modeling jobs where they want actors that could be models or sure. they could be like whatever it is. A lot of the time, I'm not going to lie, a lot of the roles that come through, they're like, oh, we want you to be a lady of the night. Or an <laughs> they, they, never, they never call it what it is. And they're like, it's fine, you'll be fully clothed. And I'm just like, okay, that's fine. It's just like, it just seemed at that point to get everything. So I said, oh, lady of the night, oh, a model. And I was like, okay, I need to, I need to branch out and break away from this pigeonholing. That's right. So um, I did. I actually went to acting school and like various workshops and then joined my acting agent. And then I think from there, I got a phone call saying, oh, we have this casting for you. And I was like, okay, what is it? She's like, I can't tell you what it is. That's always so a good I, sign. Always you would think time. that, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> depends who the call is coming from. I can't tell you anything about it, and it's in a basement, and it's just <laughs> going to be me there. <laughs> You're like, yes, by the way, it is a model from the 1800s who only works night times. You're like, oh. Exactly. <laughs> you just have to be so careful with it, with a lot of that stuff. It's um, I remember when I first joined my modeling agency, I had this casting for, like, lady stockings. <laughs> and I, um, it flag. was fine. It's just like it... It wasn't a red flag to begin with, and then um, we went down to this very. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's a red flag for me now. Everything's That's a red right. Flag. Yeah. <laughs> we went to so the casting was being held at this um, in a very posh part of London in this really nice apartment, which isn't isn't a rare thing. A lot of time, like if people are busy, they'll run the castings from their home or their home office. Mm-hmm. So I turn up to this casting, and there's. A gentleman, I will say gentleman, sat there. He has on a monogrammed dressing gown, slippers. Um, he's just like, if you mm. picture, uh, I guess, <laughs> I'll say this is in, in like the way that most American people have said this to me. If you picture a typical old English man, a very posh man. <laughs> Does he have <laughs> a monocle? Like, I need to know. The, he actually had a pocket watch. He didn't have a monocle. He had a pocket watch. That in counts. his dressing gown, in his dressing gown, <laughs> which is monogrammed. So were his slippers, and he had a matching pocket square, which was also monogrammed. <laughs> okay, I'm into so it. So I go in, and I sit at this table, and the way the castings work, I don't know how much everyone knows about it, but you go in, you introduce yourself, you give them your book, which would just be obviously like your uh, your photo, so it's like a photographic CV. You give them that, they look through it, and then you'll have like a card which has like your name, your agency, and your measurements, and a few pictures on it. So I walk in, do all the how do you do's and all that sort of thing, um, sit down, and he's sat there drinking, uh, I don't know what it would have been, probably whiskey from a proper, Obviously, you can see it's an expensive crystal glass, and he's got the bottle on the table, and I was like, okay, okay, <laughs> fine, fine, fine. Um, and I sit down, and he's just saying, he just sits there, and he just starts telling me about his life, and I was like, here's my book, here you go, <laughs> and he's just like, and he sort of just looks at me, and he just pushes it to one side, and I was just like, oh, okay, no. at no point, did, nothing, like, just to clarify now, nothing bad happened, but it was more of a thing, I think he was just a bit of a lonely, maybe slightly pervy old man that wanted to have a load of models come into his apartment for a chat, <laughs> Fair. <laughs> so he just sat down, and I, was going, I think I've been there for about 20 minutes, and normally Good for like, you. <laughs> <Good for me. laughs> I was very young at this point. Oh no. Tolerance for this sort of thing has gone right down, I have to tell you. <laughs> but um I by the end, hope. I think I just wanted to grab his bottle of whiskers. Like, I'm just gonna go. Um <laughs> and he's just pushed my book to the side and he's just like he's like, So tell me about you and I was like, Okay. I was like I'm with this modeling agency, I'm this old, I've been doing it for this many years and then I say, Again, here's my book and I push my book in front of him. And then he just goes on like telling me, telling me about his life in all too much detail, saying that he was going to be in the war, but then uh, his family were very wealthy, so he ended up uh, he ended up not having to go. And I was just like, ah. it's uh, <laughs> is this casting? I was, I was like, have I actually just come into some guy's apartment and it's not for a casting? I've just like <laughs> walked into his apartment. He's just double checking just the up, address. <laughs> In my underwear i'm just like if i just walked into the wrong place i did check the address on my phone <laughs> by course. the end of it he sits there and he's uh by the end of it, i was like okay i said i'm really sorry but i have to rush off now um and he's like oh he's like oh that's okay his speech was so slurred at this point he's like it's okay he said i'll, I'll let your agency know tomorrow he's like if i remember <laughs> and I was like, okay no worries it's like Thanks. We went down. I saw another gal on the way down the stairs. I was like, just to warn you, 
I've been in there for probably about three quarters of an hour now. And I was like, just before you go in, I think he just wants a chat. And I don't really think he didn't mention anything. He didn't look at my book or anything. He just sat there and spoke the whole time. And she just looks at me and turns around and walks back down the stairs. I was like, I feel really bad, but I have to warn her. You're a hero. <laughs> yeah, I like to think so. That was 45 minutes. I'm never getting back. <laughs> it comes at a cost, Charlotte. <laughs> But no, he was, I think he was just a bit lonely, but it's, those sort of things do happen. So when you turn up to castings, you never know. A lot of the times you sit at the table, you show them your book, or if it's an audition, they'll be like, here's the script, here's what we want you to do, stand on the tee, uh, and then they'll ask you, obviously, to do like slight variations or whatever. Mm-hmm. But um, So I got this phone call through, and so I was massively off track there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got this phone call through, and I was, they said, oh, we have um, an audition for you. Uh, it's one of the large studios, um, gave me the details and the time. Can you make it? I was like, yeah, sure. I was like, do you know what it's for? They said, she said, I sort of know what it's for, but I can't tell you, but you will find out when you get there. Mm-hmm. So obviously I go down and um, get there, pull up and we go into one of the stages and it's just completely empty apart from a few chairs. I was like, hmm. Normally, if it's for an agency, you're fine, but it's when you go through the freelance castings. But sure. luckily, this was this was for an agency and... Um, I'm walking and everyone's very nice, like, oh, hi, Charlotte, like, sign in, all that sort of thing, waiting for a couple of other girls to arrive. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they just say, uh, welcome all of us in, and they say, like, um, so before we do anything, we need to get you to sign these confidentiality waivers before we can tell you anything about the project or what it is or who anyone is. So I was like, okay, had a quick flick through it as you do, and then uh, signed that, and then... Uh, next thing I know, like, uh, Neil Scanlon comes out and he says, uh, yeah, <laughs> and I actually, I, I'm so bad with names and faces and I actually knew who, who he was. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Um, <laughs> it's not that guy again. I was like, I was like, just before he said it, I was like, I know what this is for. And he's like, so he's like this is the Star Wars. And I was like, no way, no way, no way. Um, and he's what? like, basically, he's like, Neil was so lovely. And I think it's so nice to, you don't really realize when you see, meet these big people you don't realize that they have a sense of humor or that are nice you just you, I guess you see interviews and stuff but he was he was so sweet and he was so lovely he said so we've got all of you models in today and he's like basically what this is for it's for Star Wars and we want to turn you into like a creature or an alien for Star Wars he's like the reason nice. we've got models in is because we want to pad you all out and cover up your faces <laughs> <laughs> I was like okay fine fine like I'm not beyond that it might be quite nice so yeah, we did the casting and stuff, and I actually, just before this, I had a call for another audition, I knew what that one was, um, and I was basically basting with myself, I was like, do I go to this mystery audition, or do I go to the one that I know what it's for, mm-hmm. and the other one was a commercial, and it was quite nice money and stuff, and I was like, no, I was like, I'm going to take the leap this time, and I'm just going to go to the mystery one, there it's like, go. what's in mystery box number one? Exactly, so, <laughs> it can't be that guy again, so... <laughs> 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 no, for my luck, it could have been. <laughs> Sorry, when Neil Scanlon came out, instead of a guy in a moniker dress robe, you're like, oh, thank God. It's Neil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't. I think I would have just. <laughs> no. I think by the point, my tolerance for the 45 minute chat with random lonely people would just. I don't think I would have been able to do it that day. But. Um... <laughs> Yeah. So I try my best. I try my best to be nice, but sometimes it's so hard. It's really hard. I mean, fair. Um, yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's not like he was like pervy or anything. That guy, the uh, the monocle guy, as we're going to call him. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, thank God it wasn't him. Yeah, so it, it was Neil that came through, and he was really nice and explained what was going on and stuff. And I was just like, oh, this is amazing because as a little girl, I was always like a big Star Wars fan, and yeah. I remember I grew up as quite a tomboy. I had uh, I had two brothers and a younger sister, and I remember I'd always have like lightsaber fights with my brothers. I mean, we didn't have light the lightsabers, but we had the uh, we'd have like the Christmas wrapping paper rolls, oh, and we would just beat each other up with those. And uh, I would always go skateboarding with my brothers and like BMXing, and I was just a complete tomboy. And so I never had anything. I never had Barbie dolls or any dolls like that. Um, I would never wear like pretty dresses or anything. And any time we had to go to like a Christmas dinner or something with my parents and I had to put on a dress, I would like kick up a real big stink. I'd be like, I don't want to wear it. It's <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. Um, so it was, I was like, I can't believe this is happening. Like Star Wars, like, I've always been such a big fan of it, but I think for me it was something that I more, 
I watched it a lot more when I was a kid. You know, you sort of sure. you get older, you get busy, you like lose track of like the things that you did when you were a kid. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, oh, this is amazing. I was like, okay, I'm not going to get my hopes up because it, it, the thing was like the acting and modeling stuff. You go to the audition on the casting, and my rule is I walk out of that door and I don't think about it again until or if I get that call saying I've got the job. Smart. Yeah, I think it's I think it's the only way. Otherwise, you'd probably end up rocking backwards and forth in the corner. With oh, the- <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> That's the worst part about any sort of audition is you never hear back if you don't get it. You just don't hear yeah. back. So. I know, and it's like it'd be nice that I'd be like, oh, you didn't get it because of this or that, and people are like, no, that would be horrible. Like people telling you that you don't look right or like this. That. It's like <laughs> no, I was like, don't mind constructive criticism. And like at some point, it'd be like, okay, you didn't get the job because they wanted like a blonde gal or they wanted someone that had a different accent or skin tone or. Mm-hmm. I was like, That's and it's better than just like not hearing back, and you're just like, oh my god, maybe maybe it was this, maybe it was that, maybe I didn't act the part out right. I totally like maybe agree. they were like laughing me laughing at me as the second i walked out of the room <laughs> right? oh, I'm, this, I'm exactly like you same way it's like just tell me why because then i could be like oh obviously blonde i'm not blonde so it's like yeah of but course I used to be like that, but now i'm just like okay i went in i did it i did my best it's like i would actually i would love to see if there was an archive of all of my previous audition like tapes audition tapes and anything from auditions sure. just to see just to see like what i did and how many crazy things I did some of the things are insane I know I did a an audition for Debenhams and I walk in they're like okay so this is like in your lingerie I was like oh that's fine like I did lingerie modeling for years and I still do it and that's fine so Mm -hmm. they're like okay in your underwear and then you're going to pretend to be on ice skates and then you're going to be at the same time you're going to be ice like ice skating around the room bear in mind you're in bare feet and this is like a grippy wooden floor so they want you to pretend to be like rolling around on your ice skates Pretend that you've got a hairbrush in your hand and you're singing into it. And then you've got to be doing like, you've got to be looking this way and then say that line all the time while you're pretending to like skate around and your feet are gripping on the floor. And you're trying not to fall over. And all this time you're in your underwear. It's one of those things that people like, just picture people in their underwear. It makes you feel more comfortable. It's like, you don't have to picture that because it was happening. Right. I would just love to see like an archive of all of the auditions and castings that I've ever done and just look back on them because that's right. it would be a nightmare. I don't think I'd ever. Saw, I, I probably wouldn't leave the house again, to be honest. <laughs> well, that's the real acting there. I'd stay in my house doing podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> if Skype allows me that. Exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I got a phone call. I actually don't remember how long afterwards it was. It seemed like a lifetime afterwards. I got a phone call saying that they would love me to come in and do some fittings and uh, one of the life casts. I was like, okay, nice. that's fine. And then my agent asked me, she said, uh, you're not claustrophobic, are you? <laughs> I, was like, I was like no that's fine um I was extremely claustrophobic at this point I couldn't even, <laughs> I couldn't even stand in a, I'm in, in an elevator to be honest oh, any no. more than 30 seconds I'm like oh my god the walls are closing in I can't do this um <laughs> so I get there and I <clears throat> I just finished watching Dexter nice I just finished watching Dexter and I walk into this room and the walls are covered in plastic and oh, no. uh one usually of the a girls red flag was... <laughs> <laughs> again this wasn't a red flag for me at the time that's right <laughs> and the, so the car she says to me she says oh this is your first live cast right and i said yeah yeah she goes imagine if you just finished watching dexter how scary this would be and I, I said to her i was like oh, no. i just finished watching the last episode last night actually <laughs> she's like oh no she's like it's fine honestly and then they talked through the process with me and they said uh so this is what happens it's like two layers of silicone it'll be one of the the plaster and they were really nice they put on like uh some classical music in the background and you sit there with your thumb up and if anything if you feel like you're hyperventilating or you want to get out then you just put your thumb down mm-hmm. uh, and this whole time but the first layer of the latex they painted on my head was fine i was like oh this isn't too bad actually mm-hmm. and i said same same thing like no no i'm not claustrophobic it's fine it's fine I was thinking to myself, well, I have to get over it someday. <laughs> uh, the latex they painted on was fine. I was like, I can still hear. And I could, even though my eyes were closed, I could still see the light of the room. That was fine. Uh, the second layer, everything got a bit darker and a bit quieter. Oh, boy. I was like, okay. I was like, okay, okay. Now and at this real. point, I, I had really bad hay fever as well. So one of my nostrils was quite blocked. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but they, they, so your whole, whole head is covered basically down to your shoulders. And then they just leave you two nose holes so your eyes ears and mouth are covered they put a board cap on you before and then um 
yeah, they just paint over you with like two layers of latex and a layer of plaster. Um, and I was like, okay, I was having like, I wouldn't say a panic attack, but I was sat there and I had the second layer on. I was like, okay. And I was very conscious that everything just got very dark and very quiet. Oh, yes. And before like, I could hear them all like chattering and laughing, I could hear the music. And I was like, oh no. I was like, I don't like this. <laughs> I was like, I got, I got to they return. Can I ask them to cut me out? And I was like, okay, no, I'm just going to sit here. I was like, I really want to do this job. I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to get over it. And I sat down. And I'm like, I'm in an open field. There's loads of space. Like, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Find your happy place. Find your cave. <laughs> <laughs> and then just like, I don't know if I was hyperventilating at all, but um, I was like, oh, my God. What happens if they can hear me, like, breathing, like, hyperventilating? Are they going to cut me out and then I'm not going to have a job? I was like, okay, calm myself down. And I think... After about five minutes, um, I just actually really like settled into it. I'd calm myself down and got to the point where I was like, okay, it's quite nice. It was cold outside at the time. It's like, it's really warm in here. And it just sort of became like almost like a spa treatment for me. I was like, okay, it's cozy. And I really like relaxed. And uh, uh, I remember then it was, everyone was just like patting my hand, checking if I was okay. And I was like, yeah, thumbs up, thumbs up. Mm-hmm. And then they cut me out. And the first thing I remember when they cut me out, I was like, oh, it's so cold out here. Like, oh, you, you got through that really well. It was like your first one. I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, how do you how are you doing in there? I was like, I'm gonna tell you now that before I walked in this room, I was extremely claustrophobic. <laughs> and they were like, No, you should have told us. I was like, No, it's fine. I told my agent I wasn't claustrophobic, and today I wasn't claustrophobic, so that's fine. That's right. Like a real professional, Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> but the funniest thing is, is if you ever look at my um like the mold of my live cast, um uh-huh. Are you screaming? <laughs> I'm not being, I look so relaxed and chilled. I'm actually one of the only ones that I've seen where it's like a faint smile and I just look so relaxed in it. Wow. And when it came out, everyone always comes up to me and they're like, oh, yours looks so relaxed. Everyone else is like, and mine actually has eyelashes, which is weird as well. A few people have commented on. Nice. Um, but I don't know why. I think at some point I remember being in there and because your eyes are sort of painted closed, uh-huh. I started crying. I was like, are my eyes open? are my eyes open? <laughs> then I couldn't tell if they were open or not. So I was like worrying about that. And I was like, how did this come out with like a smile on it? But it's great. It's, it's absolutely hilarious. But um, luckily they do the head and the body one separate now. I heard at some point, some people have had them done all in one thing. Oh God. I don't th- I still to this day don't think I could deal with that. I'm not sure if I could do that. <laughs> fair, fair. I definitely couldn't. And I'm not claustrophobic, but that's like being buried in something. <laughs> It is, but the other thing is, yeah, you literally can't move. Obviously, it's like a stiff plaster cast. So, Jeez. but I had the body one done. The body one was amazing. It really? was so warm. And the best thing about it is, once it starts to harden, uh-huh. you don't even have to support your body anymore. Someone's behind you holding you up, so you can just go completely like limp, and it just holds you up. Nice. But that's great, and also it's super warm. I'm a very cold person. It was super warm in there. I was like, don't cut me out. Leave me in here. It's fine. <laughs> How did they cut you out? Um, is there like a seam that I'll they just kind of pull apart or yeah I think they do I'm trying to remember how they did it now was it I mean to be fair you were inside of it so I don't expect an actual <laughs> answer <laughs> I'm not sure yeah I think that I think they do it as two halves ah, and that then makes they just sense. It apart. yeah I think they do it as two halves and then it comes apart um, that would make sense I actually don't remember for the body cast I don't remember which is weird for the head cast I have no idea she said I was inside it yeah fair Fair. That's where I'm researching, I think, is I have to do it again. It's like, guys, awesome. Please don't lose that. Pass. Don't lose it. <laughs> you can clone me now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. There are, there's like loads of my heads just like randomly lying <laughs> around. It's... This is the Charlotte drawer. Exactly. <laughs> it's pull your head down. Well. I, have, um, I have a set of my arms. So when you do the arm cast, uh-huh. uh, your fingers have to be equally separated and. One of my fingers was slightly crossed over the other, so they let me keep the hands. So I just have a set of my oh, hands, nice. <laughs> like plastic cast hands in my uh, wardrobe. I haven't actually used them for anything. There's a sat in there, which is a bit creepy. I, I think it's uh, awesome. I would have done the same thing. <laughs> High five. <laughs> like, do you want them? High five. They're like, do you want them? I was like, yeah, sure. And I've got this tiny little backpack with me. And these things, they're super heavy as well. Obviously, they're made of solid plaster. Uh-huh. But... Um, I need to do something with them. Actually, they're sat in the top of my wardrobe. A friend of mine uh, is an artist. He offered to paint them for me. Oh, nice. I might do that. Just do that and stick my jewelry on it or something. I don't know. Just leave go. them lying around my house to creep people out. Yeah, just put them on the table. 
<laughs> that's what yeah. i did with them when i got home actually and uh it really freaked out my housemate there you go just don't ever address it be like, are there hands exactly. what yeah and that's another dexter reference <laughs> yeah <laughs> with the abstract killer it's all that's about right. dexter <laughs> that's right was it was this yeah. for rogue one this was for last jedi oh nice so that was the first one i did um yeah that was great i mean i definitely jumped in the deep end yeah yeah for sure it's the, it's the best thing to do actually i think jump mm-hmm. in the deep end and uh, I agree. hope that you can swim yeah for real that's when you find out if you can for sure that's yeah, so if you find out if you've got two plaster casts for your hands in your backpack or not <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's when you know you've you finally made it charlotte when you have casts of your own hands to bring home <laughs> random pieces of spares of your body lying around your apartment that's right normally people don't get mementos so good job you know, you know. So this was for Last Jedi. And when did you know what you were going to play? Because I know you played that uh, sweet looking orange one with the horns. Yeah, that was that was the one for Last Jedi. Yeah. Um, I'm not actually sure if she ended up with a name because uh, she didn't end up in the visual dictionary. There is some of the footage in the casino. Yes. Mm. I remember Which... the release for the pictures when they did the like magazine covers and showed everything. She was there, and then I think yeah, I've seen her in a couple behind the scenes. People magazine, I think. Yeah, I haven't actually watched a bad confession. I haven't actually watched the behind the scenes of the last. <gasps> well, because I'm yeah, done. see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Skype call was fine. The bit at the right. beginning, you didn't hear me That's for like right. an hour. That it's... was fine. But I just yeah. pushed you off the edge. <laughs> it's been fun, Charlotte. Boop. <laughs> Darcy, I can't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, but no, I actually I do need to watch that. But no, that was that was great. And also the uh, the scene. Um, I mean, the set for the casino was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, phenomenal. It was it was amazing. There was just so much detail goes into the sets. Uh huh. And I think obviously I'm really really fortunate just to be able to walk onto those sets because I know. For some films I've worked on, everything's been either blue screen or green screen. Uh-huh. And it's just amazing if you see, like, the tiny or intricate details they've put into these sets. Oh, for like, sure. Even, like, the poker chips and everything in there. Like, the slot machines actually worked. You could put your coin in, and, like, they worked. That was amazing. Um, and that's just, nice. like, the, I think that's where, that's where I met all the other creatures and, like, the girls that were looking after me were absolutely amazing. I mean, the team that they have on star wars is the cfx teams admit, like i couldn't ask for anyone better to look after me oh, for sure. i think it's one of those jobs it's it's so much fun and it's nice but days on set obviously you're there early and you finish late and a lot of the times you can't really you can't see and you can't hear and all you have is you have a, a puppeteer so you have headphones in and this guy or this woman is your eyes and ears oh, so, so it's just a case of um, so I had lenses, but um, I think a lot of the time it was quite dark on set. And the thing is, is you don't really have any peripheral vision with them. It's just sort of tunnel. Obviously, they're lenses. So if you need to look, you have to turn your head all the way left and all the way right. And right. this was like the movement for that creature was supposed to be quite like feminine. And I think if I was just swishing my head around all the time to look around, it would have been a... Uh, yeah, get that off. <laughs> yeah. What's going on with that one? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But so no, was she like... was she prosthetic or animatronic or? Animatronic, animatronic. Wow. So uh, he was also controlling all of the facial expressions, and he'd be like, "Oh, someone's walking up to you at like your twelve o'clock." So you use the clock face as a system, obviously like twelve, three, six, nine, mm-hmm. and then you just do a thing where you sort of you count your steps. I'll be like, "Okay, I've got to walk from this table to that table." That's like twelve steps. Um, I'll take two steps to my left. So you really have to, you really have to map everything out, and it's, it's a lot harder than I thought it'd be. I thought I'd stick the head on, and I'd just wander around it, it'd be fine. Sure. It really isn't the case of that. But you, you really, really depend on like your puppeteer and the other creatures around you as well, because sometimes some of us have no vision if it's like a heavy prosthetic and the eyes are in a different place. Um, and then some of us have better vision. So I think it's a thing of like we do really watch out for each other, and we're like, oh, I know, like. For example, like I know, you, I know you did one of these interviews with D. I'll be like, oh, like oh yeah, D's got good vision. Like D will like come over and start talking to me, and then we'll walk off together, or like vice versa. That's um, awesome. Uh, How long did it take to get in that? 
Not very long, actually. It's just so it works. It has a sort of a pullover. So you have a balaclava, which sort of keeps all your hair and stuff in place. And then it's sort of most of them that I've done just pulled over the head. And then it's a case of like fastening it on and then putting the costume on top of it. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. That, is it hot? Yeah. Does it get hot? Uh, I'm quite a cold person. So I have to be honest, I don't really get that hot in the heads, uh-huh, which is a fair. thing I guess. It's like I'm the only person that will have my head on and be cold. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. But I think, yeah, I think it depends like how long you're in there. They're very good with, if even if they have two, three minutes, they'll come over, they'll get the heads off you. Uh, like the directors and everyone, they're always very aware that you're in the heads and like you're very, you could get hot or like you can't see or just that you've been in there for a long time and you just might want to like walk around a bit and just have have some daylight or something. So they're very good at like getting you in and out of the heads as soon as possible and not leaving you in there for any longer than you have to be in there. Like everyone's very conscious of what you're doing and they're very good. Like they speak to, I think for instance, there was <clears throat> when we were doing the casino scene in last Jedi, there was uh, one of the supporting artists that decided to keep walking through the path where I was walking. Uh-huh. Oh, and no. I know um, one, one of the, one of the floor ADs was very good at being like, he said, like, look, these guys have, like, restricted vision. Some of them are on stilts. Like, some of them can't see anything. And it's a case of if you cross in front of them, like, they could get hurt, you could get hurt. So they're very they're very good with, like, looking after you and making sure everyone knows what's going on, especially for, like, the supporting artists as well. I don't know how many of them have ever been in a head or if they know what's going on with our vision. So we do a very good job of updating everyone and making sure that everyone's safe and uh, that we're comfortable. So... Yeah, I think it was it was a really nice first experience to work on the casino scene. Sure. How long was that shoot? Um, I think it was around a week and a half, maybe two weeks. Wow. I, this, it literally it seems like I think once you've done one of the films and you think back on the other one and you're like, was that a long time or was that not a long time? Right, yeah. <laughs> true, true. That's nuts. I've seen the behind the scenes where they talked about the uh, the building of the casino. And how they like legitimately built a casino, and how yeah, massive exactly. the set was. Yeah, it, it was. It was absolutely huge, and there were stairs and different levels. And like I said, the detail was absolutely tremendous. Like all the little poker chips had detail on them, and all the stock machines. I think one of the stock machines definitely worked. The one that I used. So it's really, what? and everyone would actually be like playing cards. It's really, really good. They put nuts. a lot. Of, they put a lot of effort into that set. For sure, for sure. And uh, did you play any other characters in 8 besides the orange woman? No, no, that was the only one I did for that one. For that one. I like how you put that one. <laughs> because uh, you, you came back. You came back and did a little did a little uh, fun thing in Solo. You didn't, you didn't just come back. You came back and moved forward, if you will. And, yeah, uh, let's, I'm let's not quite sure let's, how that happened. <laughs> let's, you know what? You and D cracked the code. Because D did the same thing. And, uh, dude... Solo, you played Margo, which was pretty pretty cool, and I have a ton of questions about it. <laughs> so Amazing. first I'll off, play. what was how did that come to be? How did you go from the orange horned woman in Canto Bite to Margo, a speaking alien role, covered in like lava skin? Yeah, that was. Um, so I think I got a call back after they'd finished Last Jedi, and they're like, "Would you like to come back?" would you be interested in coming back? And I was like, yeah, of course I would. Like, get me in for fittings, bring me in now, it's fine. That's right. Um, and then they said, okay, we've got, um, we've got a few creatures for you on this one. I was like, okay, great. I was like, two or three? And like, oh, no, you got, I think there were four, I think. Yeah. There were three originally, and then somebody, another one of the CFX girls, uh, something happened and she couldn't make it, so I actually got one of hers as well. And I was like, okay, I'll nice. take it. <laughs> like who's gonna play this creature? I was like, give it to me, give it to me. <laughs> I will take them all, please. <laughs> exactly, give me all of them. I can play them all at the same time. Yeah, of course, um... like a professional. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yes, yeah, so I got that call, and then um, probably a couple month, a couple months later, I went in for just some some fittings um, for a couple of the creatures, just some costume fittings, and I hadn't really seen any of the animatronic heads or anything like that yet. And um, I was just speaking to, to Neil and he said, can you sing? I was oh. like, 
I was like, I can sing if you want your ears to bleed, basically. <laughs> I can make a noise that can be... I can make a noise, but you won't like it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then he's like, okay, he's like, so we've got this uh, uh, this really beautiful prosthetic makeup for you, and um, we're trying to see if we can cast you as one of these two parts using the prosthetic. And I was like, okay, cool. So one of them was... Um, it was an entire song in French. Nice. Which actually, it would have been miming. I do not speak a word of French. I speak Spanish and English. I was like, <laughs> why couldn't it have been in Spanish? Um, so I went off with that one and I rehearsed uh, just trying to get the, the lip sync right, which for me was a nightmare. <laughs> just trying to... <laughs> And then just doing like, oh, you'd be standing on the spot and you'd be like swaying a bit, just like singing, like you're singing, like performing in a club. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so I worked on that for a bit. And then there was um, there was a script as well for a creature named Margot. And I, so I worked on that a little bit. And it, at that point, it was all just in English. So I was oh. like, okay. It was just very like simple, just like, hello, can I like, can I check what was the what was the line in a <laughs> <laughs> It's just a false sense like, of security for you. You're like, oh it's English, you're fine. Yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> but, uh, so I did that and I did the tape which got sent to the directors for both of the parts and to be honest, I um I know Neil got in contact the next day and he's like, I just want to say you did an amazing job, no 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 and like, I don't know when you'll hear back because these things can take a day or a year, as you know. And I was like, sure. yeah, it's fine. Like, I really appreciate the opportunity and, like, you guys putting me forward and stuff. Like, I really appreciate it. And he's like, okay, like, we'll, we'll let you know when we hear anything. So I think a while went past, um, maybe a couple of months. Mm-hmm. And I was on another job. I was doing um, I was doing a part on Downton Abbey. Oh, nice. But, uh, it's not, it's not, that's when you really as, made it though. <laughs> no, but it wasn't glorious as it sound. It was for, um, an exhibition. So basically the camera was a bird's eye view over my head and I was basically using yes. the cutlery and the bowl and it would be to illustrate how, how they would uh, do things back then and etiquette and where the fork should be and which fork you should use. Oh, the best. Kind so of- it's basically, <laughs> yeah, it was a basically ha- a how to video of Downton Abbey. Nice. And I was doing that. I had to sit up straight all day because they, you would sit up straight and not on the back of the chair and you would, they would just be using your hands. So it worked in three parts. So there'd be three sort of scenes that would go together. So you would do the first part, like pick up the knife and fork and pretend to cut the meat. Then you would put there be like, okay, freeze. Then you go on to the next bit and a guy would bring the gravy boat over. You would put your cutlery down. You would come over, you would pick up the ladle and you'd go to put it on your plate. Bear in mind, there's one white tablecloth. Oh, God. And if it's on the second take, something goes wrong you have to go back to the first one oh. from the third take to the first one sounds like the worst so it was a lot of pressure it was a lot of pressure <laughs> and bless the guy that was um playing the waiter every time he came over he kept tipping the gravy bowl forwards and i was oh, like oh no. my god no. and then it just be a thing of like <laughs> me sitting there sat right up just pushing my left hand just like just pushing it back on the tray oh no but, um, you just see, he eventually... leans a little forward no <laughs> I was like, please don't. And it'd be one of those things like, oh, he would like, uh, I think someone walked across and there was a shadow and then we had to start again. Oh, so we good. did like, we did the first three anyway and I went outside for a break and I had a phone call saying like basically that I'd gotten the role of Margot. Nice. And I was like, oh, it's great. Like, it's like great. I was having like, I was, this this job was fun, but I was like, I was having such a, a day of, just sat there it's like my face isn't in this and uh sure like oh, i'm just trying not to spill get, trying to get through the day and not spill the gravy and... <laughs> which, should, which should be a metaphor <laughs> <laughs> see what i did there see what i did there <laughs> so I'm much glad wisdom. the microphone's working now <laughs> <laughs> so much wisdom charlotte so much wisdom <laughs> don't spill the gravy <laughs> That's going to be my thing now. It's like, I'm just trying to get through it. I'm just trying not to spill the gravy, okay? That's right. We need to make that a that's thing. Gonna, that's going to be my new thing now. That's yeah. going to be, well, this episode can be called just try not to spill the gravy. I'm going to help push it. This will be our new thing. <laughs> oh, oh my God. God. I'm actually going to use that now. Uh, you, sh- you know what? Me too. Let's do it. Spread it throughout the UK and the US. That's right. It's world domination immediately. Don't spill the gravy. Exactly. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> oh, it's perfect. 
what was I talking about before? I'm just, I Margo, just sidetracked. You just, you just got the call that you got Margo. Oh, yeah, exactly. So I got that call and I was like, that's great. Um, obviously, I was at another job, so I couldn't really like jump around too much or anything. So I was just like, oh, that's amazing. Like, I'm so excited. And then I got told that I was going to get um, a phone call from Andrew Jack. Oh. Uh, yes. And I actually, as well, like, I'm not very good with like knowing people's names and everything, but I knew who Andrew was. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. Like, Andrew's going to phone me. Um, and then I spoke to him on the phone for a little bit and he like, he gave me a rundown of what it was going to be and that it wasn't all going to be in English, that some of it was going to be in this alien dialect, if not all of it. Um, and he said that I've, I've sent you a finesse script and I've also sent you a voice recording if you if you want to listen to that now and just like let me know your thoughts nice um he gave me a bit a few more details on it and stuff and the first thing i did when i hung up from him i was just like oh it's so lovely to talk to you and then the first thing i did when i hung up to him is i was like i need to see what's on this audio file i was like this, <laughs> I was like, this is too good to be true i was like there's going to be something terrible on that audio file it's going to be like something that i'm not going to be able to do it's, it's all gonna in be... french <laughs> <laughs> see? that's fine See, the lines of Margot were fine, but if you give me French, that's, that's right. uh, <laughs> I that's will right. be spinning the gravy. If that's, you give me right. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Um, but oh, I listened cool. to it. And I was like, oh, it was, like, I was like, it was so beautiful. And like the way he had done it was great. And I was like, it's lovely to have like the finesse script because I can look at it at the same time. Mm-hmm. So um, I was just like, I was like, oh, I was quite happy on that other job before I got that phone call. I was like, I just want to get home and like learn this and like listen to it now and like work on it. Mm-hmm. Um, needless to say, the other half of the job got done quite quickly. So I was like, okay, I'm going to smash this. I need to go home and listen to this because I'm not sure when they want me to come in to read for it. Because I think it was, um, I seem to remember it was quite soon afterwards. Andrew's like, oh, let's come in and we'll go through it. And I was obviously like, oh, I, like, I want to like impress everyone. Like I've been given this amazing opportunity and I want to learn it and I want to go in and be like, be able to speak this part of the, the script fluently says um yeah I jumped off that job and I was like literally the second I got off the job I stuck my headphones in and I was listening to it on the tube and I was just like sat there smiling to myself like a crazy person on the tube on the way home <laughs> um but yeah it was great and then um for the next few days I was just walking around my house like saying that my poor boyfriend was just like what are you doing and I, was like, <laughs> I told you it's that thing and um he's great with languages he's like I'll learn it with you I was like no you can't learn it with me it's top secret you can't don't even look at it. Like, when, I'm, when I'm talking don't listen to me he's right. like, I you, get, and I was like what get out <laughs> <laughs> so I was, just, I was just walking around my apartment doing that and then um I had like a couple, met up with uh Andrew a couple of times on set because I was actually doing another creature at the time and we would just work on it and sort of my downtime on set and uh, to be honest, it was like I learned it a lot quicker than I thought I was going to learn it. I was like, I'm going to struggle with this, and then this this is going to be my downfall. Like I've been given this opportunity, and it's like I'm, I'm going to screw it up because I can't do this. But luckily, it wasn't French. That's right. Uh, Thank God. It wasn't French. But it all came <laughs> off. Yeah, it all came off uh, quite well. I think I didn't do anything dreadfully embarrassing. <laughs> I think it came off very well. And you know what's cool about uh, Margot specifically? With the visual dictionaries when they come out, Pablo Hidalgo, who writes them, sometimes will put little like Easter eggs and like uh, homages to the actors behind the creatures. No, do you know what? It's so embarrassing, but I actually didn't see that until someone um, pointed it out to me on Instagram. That's okay. That's okay, because now you know that not yeah. only is, is Charlotte Baker in Margot, but she's also wearing a little bit, a little Charbake, Charbake necklace. So good job. Exactly. I actually didn't notice that. I was like, how have I stared at this picture for so long and not seen that? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that means you're, you you don't have as big an ego as you could. So, well done. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, Charbank just necklace. Just man, just <laughs> yeah, obviously, it's all me. So, actually, you're welcome. And <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, good job. Good job with that. Uh, what, so, that, you said that was all prosthetics, right? Yeah, that was, um, so I think for that one, most days, so I heard um, Katie Cherry was the girl that was heading up, putting that makeup on, and we and a few of the other girls were in the makeup room in the chair at 2 a.m. most mornings. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, it was it was early, but it was one of those things that sort of, 
I've known the girls for a while. I knew them from Last Jedi as well. And mm-hmm. we'd come in in the morning. We'd have like a little chat quickly, and then like probably get in there at ten to two, go through security, go in at ten to two, get in the makeup room, and like okay, right, let's get started. Let's do this. And I mean, it's super exciting putting it on and. It's not one of those things where I'm like, oh, my God, I have to put the prosthetic on now. Like, I absolutely loved being Margot. Like, I loved every single minute of it. And yeah. it wasn't uncomfortable at all. Like, you would think having a prosthetic that size stuck to your face was uncomfortable. But I don't actually, I don't remember any discomfort at any point. I think I, I had heels on for the shoot and my feet were hurting a bit from that. And that's that's the only sort of thing that I remember. It's like, I have to go sit on my chair now, my feet hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you said it in the alien dialect, right? Of course, of course. I, did. <laughs> I said it in French. That's, what, yeah. that's all you know how to say in French. It's my feet hurt and I need to sit. And that's uh, it. Yeah. Not, not even that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, how, how long was that shoot with uh, with Margot? Um, so I think we actually had. To, that's one of those things that um, it took quite a while because there were a few scenes that we did. Um, I'm just trying to remember because I've I had a few creatures on that, so it's trying to remember which. I think c- continuously was probably a few weeks. Jeez. If you watched all the days together, it wasn't obviously because um, one of the things is, is like Neil's like you have two days in the prosthetic, two days off, and he's very insistent on that because obviously your skin like it needs time to rehydrate and. You don't want your skin to be sore and he wants us to be comfortable and stuff. So he's very, he's very, very good with like being like, no, I insist that it's two days in, two days out. And I'm like, oh, I'm fine. I can do like all four days. It's fine. Like I'll sleep, on it. I'll sleep in it. And then we don't have to put it back on in the morning and we can all get an extra like six hours sleep. <laughs> you just grab like, his no. shirt. I am Margo. <laughs> Said that on the first day. I was, like, I was like, no, we can just leave it on. At the end of the first day, I was just like, I was just like, I could feel that. I was like, okay, my hair's like in a certain position. I just want to like take it off and scratch my head. And I was like, I was like, I was like, I was like it's fine. I think I, I could have kept it on like overnight. It would be one of those things, but I don't think it would have looked pretty in the morning. Fair. I'm one of those people that falls asleep in one position and I end up like down the end of the bed or on the floor somehow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <It's just been laughs> oh, man. Um, so I think that was. It was like one large piece and then uh, the eyes and the chin and the lips were a separate piece. Wow. It was actually three pieces, but um, I didn't know it's that. more a case of like girls putting my hair in like the board cap and making sure that I'm comfortable and making sure every piece is on because it all joins together seamlessly. It has to be in the exact right position and like wow. hats off to those girls, like that level of focus they have and patience. Oh, I, yeah. d- I don't know if I, I, I might have had that when I went to that casting a few years ago, but I definitely don't have that. <laughs> oh, oh, that's great. How cool was um, it working with Woody Harrelson? Oh my God. It was, it, I, I mean, literally, I, I love Woody. I always like loved all of his work. Same. And it's really, it's like I met him on set and I was like, it's cool. Like my face doesn't show. Like I don't have to be like, Oh my God. It's, really, <laughs> it's one of those things. Like he's always like cracking jokes on set and he seemed really, really sweet and he's super professional. And I was just like, I was always really scared that I would like, it's one of those things that like, don't meet your heroes. Oh, yes. But I have to say, every one of the people that I've worked with and I've really like looked up to, I've met them and they've all been amazing. Like the cast for Solo, they were just all, they were all so sweet and they were all so professional and like they knew how to have a laugh. And it was just like, it's one of those things where you just, you go there and you like expect, you expect it to be different in like a bad way. It's like, okay, I was like, I'm not going to hype myself up for this because like my lines might get cut or like maybe I won't do the job properly or maybe like, everyone's not as nice as they were in last jedi and like everyone was absolutely amazing and everyone was so sweet and interested in like the prosthetic and like always asking about my comfort and like if i needed anything i was like i need to i just need to wear this stuff every day and then i just won't have to do it (laughs) it's so cool and to hear like the behind the scenes on these productions specifically that it's very uh, like family everyone's looking out for one another it's so cool so that's the thing um something I always say to someone is if you haven't been fortunate enough to work for an extensive period of time on a large film set, Mm -hmm. um, especially if you have a good team, your team become like your second family. I know that I I was seeing those guys more than I was seeing my friends or my family or my boyfriend. I was, I was seeing these guys like 
all day, every day from like 2 a.m. until the makeup came, makeup came off at maybe like 9, 10 at night or whatever time it was, sometimes earlier. Yeah. And you just you spend like every day with them. And obviously like when you're there, like they're like fixing your prosthetic and I'm like, oh, I can't like open this, this Coca-Cola can because I don't want to like scuff my fingers because obviously like my hands were painted and stuff. They were airbrushed. And that's the thing I had the, my tracksuit bottoms for when I wasn't um, in costume and the um, the cord on the tracksuit bottoms was very coarse. So if I did it up myself, it would it would um, like damage the fingers. So literally, especially like I have to say, Katie Cherry on that, she looked after me so much. I was just like, I was like, Mummy, can you do my trousers up, please? Can you open this can of Coke for me? It's like, <laughs> oh, get me. I had to have my coffee as well, like tepid with a straw because um, obviously with the process, you can't really drink and you have to be careful when you eat and what you eat uh-huh. uh regarding like damaging the prosthetic but i was like can you get me a, tap- a tepid soy latte with a straw please and it got to that point where <laughs> i walked up to craft services and the guy comes along and he's like soy latte with a tepid with a straw and i was like thank you <laughs> you you work out a system of blinks it's like when you need the coffee <laughs> when you need the grape <laughs> but it was like, like i had complete freedom in that creature i think ironically the one that's the one where i've had the most hearing, the most sight, and, like, the costume was amazing because I wasn't padded out for that one or anything. Sure. It was just, like, me in a dress, and I had, like, complete freedom of movement and, like, sight, and I could hear everything. And so it was fine just uh, venturing outside, trying not to... Because you wear the secrecy cloaks when you're outside because uh, some right. people decide to start Alex and try and fly, like, drones over the studio. There'll be, like, people that try and sneak in or you never know... Exactly. People trying to ruin like the fun and the surprise for everyone. Mm. So um, you wear the outside. I remember I nipped. Uh, I'm trying not <laughs> to say nipped for Lou. So I always do that with. I'm trying not to use it. <laughs> <laughs> to, so I went to the, I went to the toilet. I'm trying not to say Lou. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I went to the toilet and I, I came out and there was uh, one of the catering gals were in there. And uh, obviously, like, she's outside, like, they're all making lunch and stuff, and they don't really come on set, so they don't really know what's going on or what people look like or anything. And I remember I came out of the toilet, so picture me as Margot, and then I've got a massive black hood on. And I basically, <laughs> basically, if you picture the Grim Reaper... Is that your Darth and, like, Margot? <laughs> like, exactly, like, pulling, pulling the hood down to keep, like, the hood down, trying to be, like, all secret. Oh, OK. Pulling the hood down, <laughs> she comes out of the toilet... I literally turn around and look at her with this black hooded cape on, white face, pans painted. My head's <laughs> tilted down. It's quite dingy in this bathroom because it's in the middle of the studio. There's no windows or anything. I turn around. She looks, comes up the toilet, looks at me with this face like she's about to drop dead from a heart attack and falls back into the toilet cubicle. <laughs> I won't I tell you what word to use. She swore. <laughs> I should hope so. <laughs> I'll be back in for this. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But the amount of people... I may jump, like, going through the corridors or, like, going into the toilet every couple of seconds. Like, people just, like, just, like, oh, my God, oh, my God. I was like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, Especially just walk with the hood. All day. Exactly. But that's the thing is, like, on set, it was, um, no, it was great. On set, everyone's, like, always really interested and uh, just, like, asking, like, what's going on with this? Like, how long does that take to put on? Like, what time did you have to be up to have that on? Uh-huh. So I started playing like a little game where I just I just added an hour every time someone asked me. And they're like, how long does it take to put on? It's like, about five and a half hours. How long does it take to put on? About six and a half hours. And I actually got, I literally just said to someone in the end, I was like, oh, I just slept in it last night because it takes like <laughs> hours to put it on. They were like, really? <laughs> you just dead-eye like, them? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do I look like I'm joking? That's right. <laughs> Does his face look like it can joke? I did. Somebody needs to, there needs to be a Margot action figure and somebody needs to put like the Emperor's robe on her and that'll be the, oh, sh- that'll yeah. be the Charlotte figure. Can I'm, you please just like suggest that to someone? I'm, I really want an action figure. That would be great. I'm putting it out to everyone now. That needs to really happen. now. I'm the young book and I'm in the visual dictionary and I'm just being super greedy. That's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? That's okay. That's fine. I, so you were Margot. You were <laughs> also... More uh, things. <laughs> I know sorry, you're a one, but yeah. I, I want to know. Okay, you know what? We're going to do this. So you were involved, I will say, in a in a little game. Sabak, maybe, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> next to uh, the Captain of the Millennium Falcon, Lando, maybe, maybe not. Um, how do you pronounce that species of the character that you played? Twi'lek. 
Okay, you say Twi'lek. Okay, just checking because there are three pronunciations, and it's like you never really know. I feel like I say Twi'lek, but it also that depends. Sounds on a little bit like toilet in English, though. You know what? Fair. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That makes sense. So we we have cross cultural I mean, pronunciations now. Yeah, exactly. But I think. That's what I've heard people say, and I was like, "Oh, these like everyone works on Star Wars here; they must know what they're talking about." So I just repeat, I just regurgitate what they say to me. There, Twilight. So I can't, if, if that's what everyone else is saying, then that's. Uh, I, I'm into it. I like. So you say Twilight. You played a Twilight. First off, I did. That's I did. awesome. What was that like? I, that was great. That was. Um, I did originally do two but you can't really see because there was one in uh Corellia which you can't really see you can sort of see her bobbing around in the background a little bit but you can't really see that one a bit because um I think one of the days it would have been a day that I had another job booked and it was absolutely like this this client I've worked with them for a long time and they would just been an absolute nightmare about it and I was just like look I was like I'm not going to make it tomorrow I'm not going to make it and um I actually ended up having to do a job in the end so it was one of those things where I couldn't be too featured in that scene because obviously of continuity issues and stuff but she's in there somewhere um the Sabat game Twi'lek was yeah that was really great we actually we had a little lesson and we all sit in one of the easy ups and people would we actually had a lesson of how to play Sabat so oh, I actually sweet. know how to face her back. Like everything, that's the thing with these films is like everything's very real. Like you said with the casino, the details, like slot machines work, the chips had all the details on them. They made a casino. We all, everyone sitting at that table knew how to face her back. That's so cool. It is. And I actually want to get some cards because I'm sick of playing poker. I was like, we need to play face her back <laughs> instead. You should. You absolutely should. That's cool. See, I, I like that you said like the, the level of detail that goes into these things makes it much more of a reality. And I yeah, always like to, does. I like to take the the roles that you play and put them in the context. So in the sense that, like, you played it, you were a Twi'lek, right? And you were playing this <laughs> game of Sabak with Lando, but you were there at the game where Han won the Falcon. Yeah, what? I was. Dude, I, that's I, some Star Wars history there. And the best thing is, is I could actually. I had all of my sight and my hearing and that, so I could see all of it and I could like savor the moment. I was like, I know exactly what's going on. That's right. <laughs> you, you, those reactions are genuine. You're like, wow, no, he really did win. Look, the value of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah he won. Exactly, exactly. But it, no, it's really, really cool doing that scene. And as for like detail and stuff, again, like all of the chips and stuff that were in the middle of the table, like each one of those were, the detail on them is just crazy. And it's at some point, one of the, one of the um, supporting artists was like, why do they bother? Because like, you can't you probably won't be able to see that on camera like it, i'm sure if you can't see my face you're not gonna be able to see the detail on that chip and i was like because it's star wars like oh, that's yes. what they do i was like this is like a star wars set and like that is star wars that's what they do that's how they work they put into like everything they can into it and it is it's like once you get on that set it's just like okay i'm like i'm in star wars like the rest of like everything else outside the studio doesn't really exist so it does it allows you especially for like the other actors and stuff, especially at like the main cast, I'm guessing it's really, really helpful not to have like blue walls all around them. Be like, imagine in the distance, this is happening over there. Oh, for sure. Definitely adds another like textile layer where you're actually pushing exactly. chips and actually, actually seeing aliens walk around. Exactly. It's amazing. But it's, um, it's one of those things that, like whenever I watch the films, I can always go back and I can see it from both sides of it, which is absolutely amazing. Like I know I'm super, super lucky for that. Um, cause I'm like, oh, during that game, I was like, I know like what was happening over there and I know what the actual set looked like. And I know what, like what was behind that rock and like what was by the side of that chair and like which one of like the supporting artists was over there that I was talking to or, and it's just like, I can, it's actually like, it's made the film a little bit longer for me. Cause each scene that I was in, I know exactly what was happening around the rest of it. Even if like some bits have been cut or whatever, I know exactly what's like where everything is. Sure. It probably sounds a bit obsessive. It's like, I know where everything is, but I spent a long time on those sets. I love it. <laughs> See, I should hope that people... That's another thing that I've noticed about uh, specifically people who work on like Star Wars is a lot of them, they really care about this stuff. And I think that makes, like from a fan's perspective, makes us want to enjoy it even more because the people making it also care about the thing they're making as opposed to like, oh, it's just a job, you know, it's whatever. No, but <clears throat> I think that's really, really true. And I know, obviously, you've, you've spoken to D and... Uh... It's like it's such a huge thing, like, 
if anyone tries to like blow the lid off anything or like let secrets out, it's always like D and I are there, and I'm just like, why is someone doing that? Like, why can't they just wait? Why are they trying to ruin it? Right. And we're both there getting, <laughs> getting really upset. It's like I don't understand why they're doing it. It's like let the film come out. That's right. So I still, to be fair, I still have it. It's really strange for me to to be able to talk about it. But obviously, I, um, we finished filming the part of Margot quite a while ago, and it's one of those things that people like. Obviously, I have got like contracts and stuff that says don't talk about it. But obviously, it's one of those things that if I said something about it to someone, be like, oh, like, like it would be fine. Like they probably wouldn't say anything or anything. But with me, I'm the opposite. I'm just like, no, I can't talk about it. Like, what, right. oh, what, it? what part? Oh, were you working on solo? What, what part did you do? And I was like, no, not talking about it. Not talking about it. <laughs> I worked on solo. Did I? No, I don't. I don't. Remember I was like, that no, no, that's like that was something else. That was something else. That's right. No, that was the last Jedi. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, if you... Yeah, exactly. Paddington Bear. That's yeah, I'm Paddington Bear. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. I... It's, it's really, it's actually it's really strange. It's nice, but it's really strange to be able to talk about it because um, I yeah. think that's like the only reason I was a little bit like nervous about this interview is it's just like it's strange for me now to be able to talk about it after like months of being like, if, I, if I'm talking about it, then I'm like, I'm hurting the film and everyone's effort that went into it. And then it comes the day when you're just like, literally at the click of a finger, you're allowed to like talk, talk to people about it and like tell them about it and like show them pictures like posting that first picture on Instagram, I was so stressed out. I was like, I actually messaged you and I was like, are you sure I can post it to you? Like, is this like, uh, it's definitely come out today, right? He's like, we were at the screening last week. You know, it comes out like, it comes out, but was it the 24th or 25th? 25th. Yeah, exactly. See, that's yeah. why I don't trust myself. That's right here. Yeah. <laughs> Always go through D. <laughs> no, but let's see, I do. I take, I take up a lot of his time, like stressing out about stuff. It's like, D, quick Star Wars question, quick Star Wars question. Just like, just like, are you sure I can post it? Are you sure I can post it? And he's like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. Like, it's out now. So don't really think. I was like, okay. And um, I actually messaged him earlier today. So I was like, oh, I was like, I'm going to meet up with him next week. So I haven't seen him for a while. But I, I, must, I must drive that poor guy absolutely bananas. I really must. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's I never do... showed it. He's so sweet. He is. But <laughs> I, would drive, I would drive me insane. So I feel bad for him. You know what? But I, yeah, I still can't stop myself somehow. That's right. <laughs> I mean, with a resource like D, how can you not? You know? Exactly. I actually listened to a little bit of um, a little bit of his interview with you before this, and I was like, "Oh, it's great." I was just like, "I wanted to see." I'd listened to one of the other interviews that you did before, part of the one. Oh, right on. And I was just like, I just wanted to like see a little bit of what it's about and what people were talking about, and it's just uh, no, it's really, really good. Yeah, I know. Um, they offer you podcasts you're like okay I'm gonna go through and like check the sound quality and stuff and just like hear people like coughing all the way through it <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I purposefully made sure that my quality's up and I always like when I reach out to people I'm like this is someone who I admire their work and I follow them for a while on social media beforehand I'm like is this someone I think I would get on with and then uh, my show I'm sure you've noticed it's not a Star Wars podcast it's a podcast about the people themselves you know, and I like to get to know people and have a real genuine human conversation as opposed to like uh, a formal Typing interview. on Skype. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> well, That's see, very nice. Thank you. Like I've, I, I'm actually going to listen to the rest of the one with D, but it's, it was like two hours something. I was like, I've got three. an hour. Like, <laughs> is it three? It's three. So, it's D, okay. My shows are an hour long typically, right? So uh, That's why I say sometimes they go over, like right now, uh, and very rarely... Do they go over an hour? But a long one prior to D was like hour and a half, hour hour and forty. But then what D and I on? went to. We, we need to break this record. We need to break this record. No, we, <laughs> we D and I. I told him I was like, "Are you good on time?" He's like, "No, we're good." So we just got to talking. The first hour and a half, we didn't even mention Star Wars because he was in a boy band in the nineties. That like I know, uh, that, I know, dude, I know. Right? <laughs> so crazy. I was like, so cool. I was like, I know who M and A is, and he's like, "What?" I was like, "I do." Yeah, yeah I, I listened to that bit. That's the bit I listened to. That's the bit I listened to. It's great. <laughs> and he was freaking out. So I was like, "You have an experience that very few people in the world are ever going to have." Opening for Janet Jackson as a boy band in the nineties. Walk me through this. <laughs> And we just three three hours. That's D. That's how great D is. <laughs> I've I've literally I've spent like days on set talking to that guy. And Fair. the thing is, like, he may I I don't know if he gets bored with me. He's very good at hiding it, or he's very <laughs> sweet. I'm, I'm sorry, he's he's both. But um, literally, he's just like he's one of those people that has like endless stories and everything. I don't have to pretend to be interested in what he's saying. Right. 
Um, but he's just, he's lived like so many lives in one. He's like, he's, and he's such a sweet guy and he's so down to earth and he never has like a bad word to say about anyone. He's just like, he's amazing. He really is. He really is. Yeah. And we've also found out over the course of, I can't believe we've been talking for over an hour already. Someone who claimed to be super boring. Uh, I think I've just proven you, proven you wrong here, Charlotte. <laughs> That's very sweet, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see when your podcast goes under. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> this is the moment. So what was I, downfall? That's right. I spilled the gravy. That's what happened. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But That's I actually a thing. Now. It's going to be a thing. It's. I'm not joking. I'm going to start using. You're going to see. You're going to see memes and like gifts and whatever else. That's right. It's going to be the new something. like when you say bye to someone, be like, all right, have a good one. Don't spill the gravy. Oh my god! I'm actually going to make a meme and send it to you after this. Do it, do it. I will. Spread <laughs> it can be it. the cover of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I will spread this like wildfire. <laughs> so, uh, I, I want to say I can't believe we've been talking for an hour and twenty minutes, but we've technically been conversing for two hours. <laughs> oh my god! So, um, uh, I was actually beginning to lose hope, but it's just yeah. yeah it's, I thought every time you're like ah, and you're no, no. Nope. I nope. genuinely I thought you could hear me. I, don't know what it was. Obviously, I need to keep all of my apps updated. That's right. Well, whatever. I whatever, also uh... need to charge my phone, apparently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just for for good measure. But this, I hope you had a good time. This was really fun. Really, really was. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. And I'm, really, I'm really sorry about Skype. <laughs> oh, no, dude. It made for the greatest, like, uh, you know, in the beginning when you first meet someone, you're like, I don't really know what to talk about. I hope we get along. But now it's like, oh, no, we neither of us know how Skype works. <laughs> it's all, it's I don't, and apparently I don't know how Google works either, and neither do you. That's right. No, we found the hole in so Google. So today we have been let down by uh, Microsoft, Apple, That's right. Skype, and Google. And by the host of the Interesting Podcast. So it's a full oh, set here. Don't say <laughs> that. No, it's more like my head. <laughs> but where, where, I have to remember, where can people find you online? Uh, on my Instagram, it's Charlotte underscore Louise underscore Baker. Mm-hmm. And then for, I've actually changed my Twitter handle because I have the most common name in the world. Thank you, mum. <laughs> Thank you. If it ain't broke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is um, at real with a capital R. I don't know if that makes any difference. Uh, Charlotte I, with a capital C and Louise with a capital L. Uh-huh. Do you go by Charlotte Louise Baker or Charlotte Baker? Um, I did go bef- before I went for Charlotte Louise Baker, but it was just one of those things as... There are so many Charlotte Louise Bakers. Oh, uh-huh. there's so many Charlotte something Bakers. And I was like, okay. Um, but I got to a point where everyone already knew me as Charlotte. And like, I always went for, by Charlotte Louise Baker before. And I was like, I can't change Charlotte. And I was like, people call me Baker less than they call me Charlotte. So I was like, the easiest solution rather than changing my surname is just to drop it, I guess. Sweet. Which, uh, yeah, I mean, it's Charlotte fine. Charlotte Louise I have it is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, uh, yeah. yeah, it's just one of those things. I ended up with a very, very, very common name. And it's become even more common now that we have Princess Charlotte. I mean, so that should be a joy. Maybe I should change my name. <laughs> yeah. When you do, let me know. Uh, you... I'll let you know and come back and edit this whole yeah. podcast. <laughs> no, when you do, we'll do, we'll do another show. And then I'll call you by your new name and never address any of this. So they think it's another guest that just sounds similar. See, we do. Like and we'll think... make sure we won't mention anything about Skype on that either. Right. Like, we it. didn't even use Skype. We used FaceTime. What are you talking about? Yeah, please, of course. Who uses that probably Skype? actually could have been an option, to be honest. Right. <laughs> you've, got, you've got an iPhone, haven't you? Uh, nope. <gasps> okay, we're not friends. All right, right. well, so, see you later. Yeah. Boop. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was super fun. Thank you so much for your time. You were the best, and uh, God, this was this was great. Thank you so so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. You're the best, and. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you enjoyed it, stop by iTunes, give it a five-star rating. It really does help push the show to the front of the algorithm so that more people can find it. Uh, If you'd like to follow me, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff as Jedi Brian. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest. 
on Twitter. So until next time, be well.